Hey guys, today we're going to be making this countersink tool out of drill rod or silver steel. It can be either water or oil hardening, just ensure you know which one you have. And later in this video, I'll show you where you can get these dimension plans for free. So let's go prep this material. Now the workpiece is almost the correct length. We insert it into the lathe. This sort of overhead would be unacceptable in a center lathe, but because we are turning by hand, it is satisfactory. I apply a layout blue as it allows you to make a light scribe that barely scratches the surface while providing an excellent visual aid to what length to turn the material. If you haven't ever used this, I highly recommend you try it. Then begin to rough out the material. I usually turn the material to be around 0.1, 0.2 millimeters oversized in diameter. This gives us room to polish the workpiece down to the correct size. Here I'm using a degusset stone, which is an oil stone. These stones are quite expensive, but the ones from China on eBay aren't too bad. They do come a bit rough out of the box, but you can lap the stone on a fine diamond hone to get it smooth. If you plan on polishing the workpiece from the bottom, like I'm demonstrating, it's best to run the lathe in reverse. If you polish from the top, then run the lathe in its normal cutting direction. I'm going to start turning the taper on the end. Scribe a distance equal to the diameter, and this will give you the correct 45 degree cutting edges. When you get close to having a sharp tip, slow down and take your time, as it is quite easy for the graver to slip underneath the workpiece and chip your graver and damage the tip. To file in the lathe, you may have come across these tools. This is a double roll of file rests, and this is a single roll of file rests. These tools have rolling supports, and it lets you predetermine how much material is going to be filed away by adjusting the height. I prefer not to use these supports. If you don't have these tools, don't worry. You can simply file the workpiece in a normal bench vise with jaws that have a V-groove, or you can use a pin vise with a square head and then place that pin vise in the bench vise. Before we can begin filing the flat, we must secure the headstock by engaging the index pin. Test the headstock for any rotation. You want nothing. You will not get away with even having a little bit of movement. And if there is, find out why and fix it before proceeding. In the beginning, you can get away with only having two files. These are reasonably priced engineer's files. A hand second cut file and a hand smooth cut file. These are called hand files because unlike other files where all sides have serrations, these have a smooth edge, commonly called a safety edge. However, the safety edge usually comes unsatisfactory and will leave an unsightly scoring on the workpiece. So we must prepare the edge by honing the safety edge on an oil stone, such as an India stone. Hold the file as straight as possible, trying to distribute even pressure across the full length. After practicing, you'll start to be able to feel which parts of the tool are making contact with the stone. It's important to hone over the whole stone and not to concentrate in one place as it will eventually start to groove the stone in that area. If you have this issue or your stone is not completely flat, there's a video by the Latitz Watch Technium demonstrating how to do this and I've provided a link to that video in the description below. So here the majority of the file is smooth, however there is some deep grooves in it. This wasn't an expensive file, so this sort of thing is to be expected. So the safety edges are prepared and now we can begin preparing to file this tool down. You want to file down to about 0.05 millimeters above the center line. This allows room to polish the surface before and after hardening to get the tool to its correct height. Some may choose not to polish before hardening, but I like to ensure the tool doesn't have any ridges or grooves and I find it makes polishing any black scale that may occur during hardening a little bit easier. When we finish the tool, we want the flat to be aligned perfectly with the center line of the tool. If you remove too much material and end up below the center line, you will find that the tool will dig into the material and chatter. If you don't remove enough material, the tool will not cut and merely rub the surface. So when you begin filing, start slowly, because if the file slips, you can damage the tool and leave unsightly marks and scores, which will be prone to oxidation later. Constantly inspect your work, ensuring that the surface is flat and parallel, which 
means it isn't rounded or wavy, which can be caused if the file is rocked back and forth while filing. You'll notice a small facet as I have filed the section at a different angle. So now I must adjust the filing to ensure that I get rid of this, as I am now getting close to where I want to be. By taking measurements, we'll know exactly how far away from the center line we are. So here is a close up of the tool. As you can see, the grain is all in one direction and there's no facets. I didn't fall perfectly at 90 degrees, so as you can see, there's a slight angle. But it's all about practicing, making mistakes, knowing why you made the mistakes and then ensuring the next time you will be closer to perfection. It's time to flip the workpiece around in the lathe, take a facing cut and then turn a small taper at this end. The taper is just to remove the sharp edge and allow the tool to be inserted in a collet easier later down the track. Then polish the handle with a degusset stone and finish with a harder Kansas stone. I do this because a polished surface will reduce the chances of oxidation. And after spending a lot of time on making this tool, the last thing you want to happen is when you need to use it to pull it out and see that it's starting to rust. For heat treating, I recommend having some form of a heat resistant work surface, a butane or propane torch. For this tool, you only need something small, an alcohol lamp, quenching liquid, either water or oil, depending on your material, methylated spirits, also known as denatured alcohol, and boric acid powder. I use the boric acid powder with the alcohol to form a slurry to coat the workpiece. This helps reduce the black scale when hardening the material. Others mix the powder with water. However, you will find the alcohol will completely evaporate without residue. When quenching the material, do this in an upright vertical position. If you come in sideways, it can bend your material, especially when working with fine diameters. If you are using water, ensure that you agitate the part when submerging. This is because when the hot metal hits the water, it creates a layer of steam, which will actually act as an insulator around the steel and your hardening process won't work properly. So allow the tool to get to a bright red for around a minute or so before quenching. As you can see, there is minimal scale on the flat surface where the boric acid powder was concentrated on and we reduced the black scale on the rest of the tool. To test if the hardening process has worked, we run an old file over the tool. The file shouldn't scratch the surface as the workpiece will now be harder than the file. So now it's time to remove the black scale. I'll be using a degusset and Arkansas stone and hold the workpiece in a pin vise. I'll polish the flat the taper and the semicircle area this way and the rest can be polished with the tool in the lathe. If you're trying to polish the whole tool in the lathe, you run the high risk of changing the profile of the taper and rounding the sharp cutting edge. After the scale is removed, it is time to temper the cutting tip. We do this by getting the steel to a light straw color, which is approximately 250 degrees Celsius or 482 degrees Fahrenheit using a soft flame, which the alcohol lamp is perfect for. Don't put the tip directly in the flame. As it's only small, you will temper this part before the rest of the tool and end up making the tip too soft. I must apologize, I did change camera positions to get a better visual for the color change and I actually forgot to hit that record button. So I didn't record that process and also I missed out on polishing out the straw colored temper. But I assure you it was tempered correctly and the polishing of the temper is actually very easy compared to the black scale. So here the tool is finished and now I'm gonna test it by countersinking a hole in one of my scrap experimental brass pieces. As you can see, it cuts really nice. It leaves a bright finish on the taper. It doesn't leave any scoring lines or chatter marks. So if you want the dimension plans to try this yourself, head over to facebook.com slash the DNDK. If you want to purchase any of the tools such as the degusset stone, I have provided links in the description to Amazon and eBay. I provided US sellers and also international sellers and also they're the best prices that I can find for you guys. I just want to note that if you do purchase from these links, Amazon or eBay will give me a small percentage of that sale, which helps me create better content for you guys and it's no extra cost to you. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or there's something that you wanna say, feel free to leave it in the comment section below.